Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Bucks UK podcast. We're at episode 67. The preseason for the NFL season is well underway. Training camps are going, and we're looking forward to seeing what the Bucks are going to do very, very soon. I'm your host for this one. My name's Alex. I've got David, Pete, and Gary with me. Hello, gents. Thank you for joining me. And we're going to Hi, discuss. Dad. We're going to discuss everything Bucks preseason news. So let's just get straight into this. Um, I mean, where do we start on this one, gents? Uh, wide receivers. I think that's looking like a real, real good battle there. Of course, there are injuries. Uh, Evans got a slight injury. Uh, but Go- uh, Goldwing is back uh, training or back practicing, which is brilliant. Uh, Pete, give us your initial thoughts on those. I think the fact that Godwin's back training this early is you know, a really big positive for us. The fact that he's, he's already back out there. They're saying, you know, it's, with the injury he had, he's, he's, he's healed up. He's obviously done the work in the off season to make sure that he can get there. But I think actually seeing him out in pads and and participating is a real positive. I don't know if we actually see him um, game one. You know, it's probably still going to be a little while till we actually get him out there. But and he probably won't take any snaps in preseason. But I think it's a massive positive. It's a worry about Evans still with this hamstring because he was saying that he's had a great off season. He was feeling really healthy and in in a great position, and for him to already have a even if just a twinge on hamstring, it's, it's been a problem over the last couple of seasons that he's had this, you know, in the background. So hopefully it doesn't, hopefully it gets sorted and he can can get onto the field in time for, for the Cowboys. David, do we need to be concerned? You know, Godwin is back a lot sooner than expected. I mean, is that something to worry about? Or well, back, I think they're going to take it easy. Anyway? I mean, they're going to take it easy with him and I think it's going to be a, still a slow process. Like, Pete says, I mean, I don't really see him playing much pre-season at all. He's not really doing a great deal on the field other than sort of stretching, building up his exercise and taking some free catches. So um, I think that's going to be gent- gently as it goes all the way through pre-season and see where he is come week one. Like I say, Evans, he consistently picks up little niggles, doesn't he? Be it his ankles, be it hamstrings. Um, and again, you just want to treat him with kick gloves going all the way up to, to start. We can't afford really with that opening four games that we've got for those two to be sort of down early on in the season. You know, I'd, I'd treat them quite gently. And, you know, there's a massive battle following behind those two, really, who's going to take on the rest of the wide receiving course. So, you know, I think all the way through training camp pre-season, that's really where the focus is going to be on who's going to fill the, the remaining roster spots and also not just a wide receiver role, but picking up special teams elements as well. Absolutely. And uh, that leads me very nicely into my next point. So Gary, um, you know, Godwin uh, still came back from his injury. Uh, chances are we are going to see some other players, or we are going to see other players take the field to try and get their spot on the roster for the season. Uh, one man that is certainly looking for, to make this roster is a certain Julio Jones, if that name rings a bell to anybody. Um, I mean, it, probably one of the most biggest surprise pickups of the off-season, Gary? Oh, for me, absolutely. Um, I mean, anybody that's a Bucks fan knows all about Julio Jones because mm. he's just killed us, uh, you know, when he was in Atlanta. Um, I was on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, and this was prior to Julio Jones, and we were discussing uh, what we thought would happen. Nobody mentioned picking up another receiver because we've just got so many. Um, but what a pickup. I mean, it's just it's ridiculous that, um, you know, the top end of the wide receiver core, Evans, Godwin, Gage, and Jones, and that means, of course, picking up Jones, that you can take it easy with Godwin if there's any mm. doubt at all about his um, fitness. Uh, you know, they don't need, or they can ease him back in even more gently than otherwise. The only th- the, th- the the big take I would uh, make for the wide receiver um, core, if you like, uh, we started last season with the Cowboys with seven receivers on the on the roster. We've got 14 on the roster at the moment. So you know the top four. So there's going to be an awful lot of very disappointed people and some highly experienced receivers, Scotty Miller, for example, Perriman, for example, that are going to find themselves either working in McDonald's or on the practice squad. 
I mean, do you think they brought in Gage and Julio Jones because of still concerns around Godwin being fit for the season and, you know, a bit of protection around Evans? Well, they they certainly could well have done so, uh, Julio Jones particularly. But then we all know everything to do with this team at the moment is, is you know, it's Renown. all about Brady, isn't it? It's all about running it back. It's all about winning the Super Bowl. And it's all about Brady. And if Brady wanted him, they've moved heaven and earth to get him. And even if Brady... You know, didn't want him. He, the, the, the appeal for the Bucks would have been that Brady is a Buccaneer. It gives who there's rumours that, that we were talking to. to um, there's rumours that we were talking to uh, Beckham, wasn't there? OJ Beckham. There's there rumours that we were before with with Julio, Joe, and it was sort of this between the two of them. And Brady went out and had been texting Julio Jones to to get him on board. I think that's a great point that they've said, though, of it being that, you know, is there an element of where we've brought them in to take that pressure off? Because like when we had um, AB, it's sort of once you've got that double team off Evans, he's got an easier time of not having to have that fight so much because it will hopefully be that they've got to spread out the fight between mm. the four wide receivers we could have on the field. So it takes that pressure well, off a little bit. Do you think we'll see all four on the field at the same time? Is that, is that even possible? I think we definitely line up some trick plays and some, yeah. some great plays. Absolutely. Take, take a tight end out and uh, <laughs> we, we might we might mm. see him on there. Um, Pete, let's just discuss this uh, depth we've got at wide receiver in a little bit more detail. Um, you know, I don't have the name of all 14 with me, but I've got a name of a few of them. So, of course, we've got Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, um, Julio Jones, Gage, Grayson, Johnson, Miller, Perryman, Darden. That's just to name a few. Even the second, uh, the third, well, actually going now to fifth and sixth string, if we think about who are our, it's, uh, who are most more than likely going to be our first, second, third and fourth strings, we've got great backup in that position right now. Oh, definitely. We've got a lot of talent. I mean, there's, again, with this off-season, uh, this pre-season training camp, Darden's been, you know, hitting the headlines with some big plays and, and showing, but hopefully he, convert, he can convert it this time to actually on the field. And he hasn't got to just be special teams to, to make it happen. Tyler Johnson, again, he's been, you know, Brady put a lot of trust in him with the, with some plays last year to get it done. So I think that he should be a solid to, to make the roster. I don't know about Scotty Miller anymore because I feel that even though we did a couple of those end around trick plays, I worry that he just hasn't made with the size and he just hasn't got what we need anymore. So I wonder whether maybe he makes the special team roster if you know because he's been doing some punt return stuff so maybe that's his way in to remain on the team um with Grayson and, and Perryman it, it, again they could end up being cut from the the, the team now but we we'll pick them up again later on like we did if we get an injury and they come and make a splash play mm. you know again but I mean I think it's going to be interesting who's going to be our real pace guy downfield um sort of replacing AB because you know mm. it's not really Evans or Godwin, Godwin's a real sort of mix-up in his play. Perryman was a man last season that had three of the four longest plays. He hasn't been in practice for over a week. Okay. So, you know, is that going to be sort of between him and Scotty Miller still to perhaps pick up that? Um, it's going to be interesting to see who's going to be the deep threat. Yeah, you're right, of course. Um, but the one thing about Perryman is, in a Bucks uniform, all he does is produce. Yeah. Going, you know, back to the back end of that season when Jameis was a quarterback and he had an absolute monster last three or four games, didn't he, when all the others were injured. So, you know, I'm sure the, the coaching staff uh, and Jason Light particularly have got a lot of um, faith in him. But but it's a good point you make, Dave. Who is going to be the speedster? Um, can, I, can, I throw, can I throw a quick name out there? Because this guy... Uh, Brady put a lot of trust in towards him last season. Uh, Cyril Grayson. He yeah. could be, you know, he, he he really came good for us at the end of last season. So, who you know, that could be one of the players that we're looking at um, who, who might be that, that speedster there. Um, it's annoying that we don't have Kieran on for this next bit because um, it, it's his favourite part that I want to have a quick discussion about and that is uh, special teams and David you mentioned it um, earlier so I want to come back to you on that one um, if you had to put your money where your mouth is who do you think might be the kickoff 
and punt returner? Or are we going to have two different players for the roles? I don't know. I think they're trying them all out. I don't think the Bucks know yet. Mm. I mean, they've got sort of five men, haven't they? All trying them every every practice session. It seems that you know you've got the likes of Darden, Miller, Ty Johnson, um, even some of the rookies trying that out now. I'm not sure that they know the answer to that yet. And I think it might just shake up on uh, ultimately the overall roster on receivers. How Evans and um, Godwin are that? How many that's he need to keep on the roster? Mm. Have they got the luxury of bringing of having a specialist returner, or do they have to make it up from the receiving core? I mean, I think Pete, I agree with you. I think Scotty Miller is a, a very sound option. Uh, should you know, should that be his way into the team? Um, let's just stay on the offense, but I want to move away from my receivers now to um, our O line, which. Uh, has taken a huge loss, both literally and figuratively, uh, for the season. Uh, of course, Ryan Jensen is out for the season. A uh, injury picked up during uh, the preseason camps, the training camps. Um, big, big loss. Uh, Gary, uh, <laughs> any thoughts? Who, who's gonna, who do you think is going to replace him? What impact is that going to have? He's going to be a huge loss in many, many ways. He absolutely is going to be a huge loss. And again, you know, when I was on a couple of weeks ago, he was still fit and walking about under his own steam. It was just not an issue. The the O-line was going to be one of the strengths of the team. Um, I, I, I really answer it in the same way that Dave answered the last question. I'm not even sure the Bucks know who it's going to be at the moment. They keep talking up Hainsey. They keep talking at Leverett. But, of course, the one thing they've not got on the roster, to my knowledge, anyway, there might be one of the one of the guys right at the bottom end, you know, in the sort of, you know, the 83rd or 84th person on the roster or something. They haven't got a specialist centre, so they're having to convert somebody. Um, and, you know, they, they're saying that they drafted Hainsey last year with the intention of converting him to centre so I just hope he got an awful lot of practice at it last year because the one thing we don't want is shotgun snap sailing over Brady's head because you can bet your boots he ain't going to turn and chase it and fall on it no no I, I mean, mean a big, get... uh... oh, sorry sorry David I mean at one stage in the off season we didn't have Jensen anyway <laughs> <laughs> no um... <laughs> there must have been a plan <laughs> I mean, Pete, I don't know about you, but a concern that certainly comes to my head with Jensen being out is Brady is, um, how can I put this kindly? He's not mobile. I can't put it kindly. He can't move. Um, you know, Jensen was a, a man that he clearly trusted immensely. So whoever comes in to fill that gap, they've, they're, they're, they're going to be leading that line to keep to keep Brady on his feet. Oh, definitely. The, the, just the personal connection that Brady and Jensen had built, that sort of brotherhood of be, having that trust in knowing that he's got my back majority of the time if I need him to. It's that's going to be, it's going to, you worry that it's going to be, I mean, Brady's obviously, he's Brady, he's a professional, but there's still got to be a little bit of, that will always be a worry in your head if there is a snap or if there is a, you know, a, a missed snap, if it is Hainsey, that he's got that worry that he could end up injured or, you know, smothered by some huge lineman just because Hainsey's, you know, not on that le- on that same level as Jensen. I know Hainsey did a lot in the off-season with um, AQ Shipley, so there's a lot of talk about how that was really, a, you know, a really good camp for him that he went away and did himself. So, like you say, they're talking him up. Hopefully he's he's getting a lot of the snaps that he needs to, um, to pre- you know, to go out and take over the job until Jensen's back. I mean, they haven't even released what's actually wrong with Jensen yet, have they? They haven't actually put a definition of on what he's actually done. They just talked about, um, I was reading about, they were saying, oh, it's really swollen, really swollen. But really swollen is quite a negative because it means that mm. the body's obviously mm. quite worried whatever's going on in there that it's needed to mm. swell up that much. So it doesn't seem promising, but mm. hopefully Hainsey yeah. can, um, yeah. can pull it off. It's either really good that... news or really bad news. <laughs> yeah. well, I was just going to say the same thing. I don't yeah. know whether it's good or bad that he's. No. Uh, that they've not said anything. Let's uh, let's just keep our fingers crossed. And they I mean, said he's going to be out months, so let's hope he can at least get back. I mean, it could be um, another. It could be another Vita Vea situation, couldn't it? That the team mm, are, you yeah. know, just just trying to get in 
uh, win the mental battle. And David, that's um, something that Ryan Jensen was always very good at on the field. You know, it's, it's all about gaining those small advantages. Yeah. And he could always get under the skin of opposition players. Um, you know, that could be just a, a little thing to bear in mind as well for throughout the season. Yeah, that actually, we I mean, got there's that really four keys to that position, isn't there? There's mm. actually reading the line <clears> and the communication around that. There's making a snap, which I think is probably hopefully the easiest thing of all. There's the general protection and looking after Brady, but then that's just that aggressive tone being set up front. And, you know, Hainsey, whoever comes in, needs to develop that nasty streak, doesn't he? We need somebody yeah. in there that's yeah. going to ruffle people up and, you know, be that leader out there that we need on the offence. You know, leadership um, is a huge word there because the centre is essentially the leader of that O-line. You know, that, that is just vitally important. Sorry, Pete, you were going to come in there. I was going to say, you, you hear about um, Luke Godek, as seems he, people are saying he's got that sort of nasty streak and that bit of tenaciousness. So hopefully, with still having, I know worse, worse always seems like a bit of a gentle giant a lot of the time, but you know, you've got some, you've still got some foundations in the O line that hopefully will, even if it is Hainsey, will sort of help build that up in him. Uh, definitely, completely agree with you there. Um, let's uh, have a quick chat about the quarterback position. We have obviously mentioned Brady uh, quite a bit so far in this episode, um, but he has uh, he did take a few days off uh, of the uh, camps um, during this preseason, um, and this has. Well, I mean, I've been. I don't know about you guys, but from it, I'm thrilled that it's allowed Trask to take a bit more reps and get a bit more practice there as well. Um, uh, Pete, where do you see Trask's development? It's uh, you know obviously he's been with the team uh, for a couple of years now. He was drafted as essentially the replacement for when Brady does decide to hang up the cleats. Uh, I mean, are the t- you know we said about uh, how the team still don't know about other positions? Are they still unsure about what happens when Brady goes? Yeah, I think that's the main question because well, I hope not. I hope that they are seeing stuff that we're not hearing about that, that's good from Trask. Like, even if they're managing to see good, you know, fundamentals and stuff that they could build on this off, you know, this off season, like you know, behind the scenes, because everything you read about him, you know, the Bucks had to delete that interception video because he's not having a good camp. He's not looking very good. So, and they're talking about how he's going to play loads of snaps against the Dolphins and in the, all these preseason games, Brady's not really going to see much of the field. So, I hope he's a game time champion and tra- you know, training camp. He can have a bit of a rough patch. It's not too bad, but it's a it's a worry because there was a lot of expectation of him coming in and taking like you know being under Brady, learning everything, and then coming in and sort of being set and ready to go. And it doesn't seem like that's actually happening. If anything, Gabbert's having the better training camp. It seems. It's funny you mentioned Gabbert because David, I just wanted to ask your opinion on this one. Um, is Gabbert QB two or is Trask ready to take that role? No, I love things just like last season. He's QB two at the minute. He's a steady hand, um, tried and tested. You know, not the greatest um, career, but actually, when he's come in before, he's done an okay job for us. And I think you know, with all the the weapons and the quality of our defence, that's actually what we need, just a steady ship. But yeah, I mean, you know, this year is all about trying to look at the development of Trask and making a decision come the end of the year. So I think he's going to get a lot of play time in these pre-season games. Uh, and that's going to be interesting to see. I mean, don't forget, a lot of time when he's uh, out there as quarterback, he's also not playing with, you know, first string receivers either. So, um, you know, and it, all these things, it needs to actually chill relationships, doesn't it? And time in with players. And so don't expect him to go straight in there and to be able to throw bombs to everybody. That's just not going to happen, is it? But uh, what we do need to see is a development of him this year. Uh, so, Gary, we spent a lot of time talking about the offence. I do just want to switch to defence uh, for a bit as well. Um, it's going to look a little bit different. This season, still you've got the main sort of uh, uh, stem, if you like, or spying of that defense. Uh, some great rookies have come in, or some uh, on paper anyway, some great rookies have come in. Uh, but of course, there is a huge loss in JPP. He has left us a, a great servant to the team. He's been brilliant. Um, so that I, I just want your thoughts on that. Really, how do you think this defense is uh, is going to go next season? Um, I think they're going to be great. Uh, I said a couple of weeks ago, I was really worried about losing Sue. 
um, the way Hicks is performing in camp. Um, I'm not bothered about Sue at all now. Um, I think uh, Akeem Hicks is a fantastic replacement. Him and Veer, they're not going to be able to run on us uh, through the middle. That's for dead certain. It, it's, it all comes down to, and we all know it, we've, we keep saying it, it all comes down to injuries. If we can keep everybody fit, then I think this defence is going to be great. I love the additions they've made in the secondary. Uh, <clears throat> the latest rumour is that they're switching Winfield into the slot. Presumably they've got uh, Keanu Neal and Logan Ryan playing the safety spot. There's a lot of experience there. So, yeah, I think, I think we're going to be great. The key... The absolute key is keeping everybody fit. Yeah, uh, it sounds like JTS's development is going really well as well. Mm. And again, I yeah. think, you know, this is another yeah. up curve there that is going to have a big season. Absolutely. Um, so that all sort of brings us to the end of our uh, our thoughts on on. Uh, training camp and how it's gone so far but that doesn't bring us to the end of end of our episode uh, we do have some club news that we want to discuss with uh, or share with you all in a moment but before we do I must do the usual thanks that we always do on the Bucks UK podcast which is our huge thanks to Bucks Report they have been brilliantly helping us to promote our podcast please go and check them out in the links below this episode if you're watching on YouTube uh, of course don't forget we're also on social media Twitter Facebook Instagram and we're also now on TikTok we have we, we have joined TikTok talk so please come and give us follows on there as well uh we would love to share as much content as we can with you on those uh platforms so uh david um the club news what can you tell our members about uh what we've got lined up for the season uh is, the season coming it's a big week this week launch of this season's fantasy leagues which are already i think pretty much full for the first four leagues that we've raised so last year we'd had four leagues I'm sorry, five leagues. It looks like the first four field this year, so we'll be opening more, more leagues. So if you're a Bucks UK member, make sure you uh, get on there. It's great fun every year. It builds a lot of uh, camaraderie and fun across the members, so it, it's really worth doing. It's nice and easy to do. It's a good bit of fun, so do that. Make sure you get on the fans. We've also got our confirmation of our Game Watch events Last year's everyone that turned up to them tell you they were just brilliant. Uh, such good fun. Um, great, finally, after all the uh, COVID periods to actually all get back together. So we haven't got just one or two this year. We've got three books already. Um, so the first one is week two, and that's up in Leeds. So we take on the Saints that game. So that's going to be a, a good run to start with. And everyone who went into Leeds last year will know it was a, a crazy night. <laughs> so, uh, more better way to start the season. Season week five, we're back to the London venue in Marylebone, where we take on the Falcons. So, we had a bit of a tough game when we were in London last year. So, payback with hopefully a nice victory this year. And we've got another special one, week nine, and this is going to be a tough one against the Rams. So, a big game to watch, and that's a nine twenty-five kickoff so it's a late night game for us Bucks UK fans and we've got that in a pub in Birmingham with a uh, a lockout so a late finish for us all and well done to Mariana for organising the venue for that so all the details are on the forum so make sure you get on there get your fantasy league in and get your tickets booked for our, for, for our events then of course it's start of the season so soon we'll be launching all of our big season competitions as well so look out for them on the forum in the next few weeks fantastic thank you for that david and if you do want if you do want to become a butch uk member please visit our website www.butchuk.org and all the information is on there and then we'd love to see new members come and join us at our watch parties the birmingham one i'm not going to say too much but that is going to be a really exciting one so if you can make that one Please get your ticket for it because it's going to be something really special in Birmingham. Um, so but let's just just oh, also please. sorry, Alex. Yes, can David. I just yep. also make a mention? Um, last week we had a great club members call with Brian Ford, oh, of course, yes, CEO of Tampa Bay, and he wants to join us for another pre-game call before the Dallas game, the opening game of the season. So make sure that everyone keeps on the forum for look out for that as well. We want as many members as we can on that call. Fantastic. Great stuff there. Uh, so let's round off our podcast today, gents, by talking about 
the Buccaneers' first preseason game. It's uh, it's great that we you know we get football back this month. I think we've all been longing for it. Uh, it's a Florida derby, if you like, as well. We uh, we we're, we're going to be playing the Dolphins. Um, so uh, Gary, um, anything you're going to be looking in particular when you what uh, during the Miami game? Um, yeah, one thing and one thing only that whenever a player gets goes down, he gets back up again. Um, under his own steam. I I hate, I loathe with a passion preseason. Always have, always will. Uh, it's of only a benefit to the guys, you know, the last sort of 10 guys on the roster. Of course, we know the top 40 or so, don't we? Um, and it's, you know, people get injured and that's, would you want to play, you know, Brady in a, in a preseason game and some young buck you know, defensive end from Tennessee decides he's going to make his name and plants Brady on his backside and for him not to get up and our season is down the swanee. Um, so I'll be watching through, a bit like watching um, Doctor Who with the Daleks all those years ago when you're looking through your fingers, you know, <laughs> because I just, as long as everybody, I don't care about the result as long as everybody walks off the field and is fit at the end of it. That's the only thing I'll be looking for. Pete, the uh, uh, obviously this preseason game um, is Bowles' bow, if you like, as, as head coach. It's his first game in charge. Um, but is it one that, I think Gary's essentially touched on this already, but do the teams really take these seriously? I don't think they take the score seriously, but I think they take how people perform seriously. So, you know, like we're saying, if, if, if Trask is in quite off, you know, for a lot of snaps, it's seeing what his vision is like and, and what his throws are like, because there's been reports of him under throwing it. And then if Hainsey is taking, if he, you know, if he's going to be a centre, if he's getting his, this is his, him showing what he's learned and where, you know, where he is, whether he can snap for, whether he can hold up the play, what he can manage. I think it's going to be interesting to see what sort of rotation we get with, you know, who's going to be where, because there's a lot of talk about um, the left guard and the right guard and who's, you know, who's taken over what position. Because I think Stinney's been moving over. And so it'd be, it'd be interesting to see just where people are lining up and how they're getting on in those positions. David, I think something that is going to be very fascinating for all of us to watch, uh, even though it is only a pre-season game, is, you know, we do have two defensive coordinators now. You know, how's that? How's that going to work? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Bowles is going. Uh, he has to take the the job upstairs, doesn't he? Um, and he needs to be able to sit back. But again, it's just another thing they've got to work out. You know, that's what preseason is for. You know, how much are they down on the touchline now, and how much are they up in the box? And uh, it's all a learning curve for all of them. And again, it's that's preseason. It's about looking at the second half of the roster understanding how many of them know the playbook, mm. how many of them can read the game. And that's what you're learning about, you know, not necessarily about their playmaking ability. To a degree, they should already have that. It's actually what they've learned and how they can actually put that on the field. I mean, one just thing that was interesting in the last three or four seasons, last couple particularly, I suppose, because of COVID and whatever, is that first game of the season, the number of full starts and penalties given early that are just timing matters and to a degree do teams even take pre-season seriously enough because you can give up an awful lot of yards and penalties and game momentum early on with stupid penalties as I think all Bucks fans have come to, <laughs> to know um, and actually you know if you take some of those things a bit more seriously up front it can give you a, a bit of an advantage on week one and two so uh, yeah. a, high, a high school in pre-season game then Davis <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, a high score in pre-season game then. Well, I'm not sure about that. It depends who's on the field, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, you know, if you've got Trask a quarterback for most of the games, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> yeah. you go either way. Well, I, I mean, I think Miami it, are going to be quite feisty to start with, and you know, it is at the end of the day, it's the second half of the roster. These are all players that are fighting for their lives and their careers out there. So, you know, they all want to show something. 
I mean, uh, I'll tell you what. I, as it's only preseason, I won't ask for the score predictions. I'll, I'll I'll wait for that bit. I'll let you guys off that one this week. But uh, but no, gents, thank you ever so much. Uh, that does bring us to the end of our podcast. It's been a pleasure, David, Pete, Gary. Thank you for joining me. Uh, and thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks. And thank you for you guys for tuning in. Uh, we will be back in a couple of weeks uh, for our next episode. But until then, take care. And as always, go Bucks. Go Bucks. Go Bucks. Go Bucks.